Imagine it's a Monday morning. After a wonderful weekend of excitement and energy, you're excited and energized to start on that project that you left on Friday. So you decide, I think what I need is to put on my headphones, listen to a little music to allow myself to concentrate on what I'm going to work on. You put on your favorite country station, classic country, and off come the sounds of George Jones. Let's see if I can get this to work. Can you hear that? That was a little bit out of tune, but we'll try that again. I woke up this morning aching in pain. Don't think I can work, but I'll try. The car's in the shop. So I thumbed all the way, all these days, I barely get by, whoa, these days, one barely gets by. start of the day, you're already depressed and stressed, and you haven't even gotten any work done. That leads me to tip number one in your stress alleviation program, don't listen to country music. <laughs> no good can come up. But it does lead to the second tip, and that is pick up a right brain activity. Now, you likely spend all day working on left brain activities. We analyze, we examine, we write testimony, we deal with difficult calls, we work on computer programs. Those are all left brain activities. What's the fascinating research now is that if you pick up a right brain hobby, something that stresses your creative side, dancing, singing, playing a musical instrument, it actually can not only help alleviate stress, but it can improve your cognitive ability because of the relationships and what we've learned with mind mapping. So, I picked up six weeks ago the guitar. Now you probably guessed after you heard me play saying, Jeffrey, doesn't sound like you've been playing all that long. <laughs> no, I haven't, but you know, at least you gotta start somewhere. Here's the first chord you always learn when you pick up guitar, the G. And what's interesting about that is you'd be amazed what you can do with a single chord. My wife was in the kitchen making dinner, so I walked up to her and I sang, you're in the kitchen making <laughs> dinner for me. It takes me a while to switch to a chord. I only know three chords. <laughs> I'm out here waiting for it patiently. <laughs> Won't you save a little kiss for me? I'm going to see if I can go back to G. Because I'm out here and you're my little sweetie. <laughs> About then she looked at me and says, okay, who are you and what have you done with my real husband? <laughs> So picking up a right brain activity can not only help alleviate stress, but it can improve your personal relationships. Otherwise, I'm giving that presentation in a lower room and I smack the guitar in the ceiling. So <laughs> that's why I always tend to look up and go, okay, the ceiling's kind of high. And that leads to tip number three. Every single day, establish a good personal connection with somebody. Two years ago, I was sitting next to a wonderful lady, now retired, named Debbie. She used to handle commission complaints. One morning, and this was a Tuesday morning, I remember specifically, I hear her pick up the phone and say, this is Debbie Rice. Yes, those are the sorts of complaints I handle. I didn't hear her say another word for seven minutes. <laughs> seven minutes. She has a timer on her clock, so she could actually time these things. After seven minutes, she says, and then what happened? <laughs> Another five minutes go by, <laughs> nothing. She was on that phone call for 32 minutes. She eventually got to the point where she could do some of the speaking. 
Now, <clears throat> Debbie is a wonderful lady, and I always used to, when she had these incidents, I always used to come and ask her. So, of course, I got up as soon as the call ended, and I said, well, it sounds like you got an earful. She told me a little bit about the detail, but at the end, she said something I've never forgotten. She said, you know, Jeffrey, that call ended kind of interestingly. The lady said, Debbie, I want to thank you. Do you know in all the time I've been trying to get this issue resolved, you're the first person who actually listened to me. And here's the denouement of that. That lady who had written the commission, the governor's office, and the newspaper complaining about us, never complained about us again. All because Debbie listened and made that personal connection that we all want so much. Now, my personal connection is every day I call my mother in Arkansas. Well, only about five minutes. You know, I tell you, I'm a guy. I don't have that much to say. <laughs> but I call her and check in every day. She usually tells me what's going on with the neighbors in Arkansas, most of whom I have no idea who they are, what cows got out of the pasture, how it trampled her land, and how annoyed she is. It. But with every day, that connection, it just kind of centers me. Get off the phone with my mother, I go, ah, isn't that nice? So that was tip number, what tip, anybody counting these? Four. Three. Three? Three. No, three. three. Make a personal connection. Now all this leads to tip number four. Tip number four is the importance of gratitude in our lives. I have two ways to do that. First of all, keep a gratitude journal. Now, the best person I ever saw with a gratitude journal actually is my wife. Elizabeth, every single morning, wakes up in this journal and writes from seven to ten items that she is grateful for. Every evening, she reviews those, maybe adds to them, maybe edits them. And I remember asking her, because I had never seen this before, why do you do that? She said, Jeffrey, it's because we get so focused on the negative so focused on the things that stress our lives, to me, it centers me every morning and every evening to remind myself of all the things I'm grateful for. One of the items she puts down every day is an example. Every single day, she reminds herself that she is blessed to have raised five healthy children. It's a simple item, but that's a wonderful thing, and we can forget about that. Now, personally, I don't have that kind of discipline. So don't you love it? You see someone do something that's effective for them, and you go, I'm never doing that kind of work. <laughs> but I do have a gratitude phrase. A gratitude phrase I learned in 1973 when I spent the entire summer working for my father in construction. We got an opportunity to do a lot of home remodeling work in the hills of eastern Tennessee. Now, for those of you not familiar with the area, that's coal country. All summer long, the year I turned 16, we would go out and work on people's homes, almost every one of whom were coal miners. Their shift was 7 to 3. And at 3.30, they would all come home, covered in coal dust. Now, I'd been working outside all day. It wasn't that it was easy work. It was tough work. But at least I wasn't covered in coal dust. And even as a 16-year-old, I remember turning to my dad and saying, Dad, how much of that coal dust do you think ends up inside? And he looked at me and goes, Jeffrey, probably some of it. Dad didn't have a whole lot to say. In fact, <laughs> he, he probably used to wonder, how did I ever raise you? He never <laughs> shut up. He never spoke. So the phrase I learned at age 16 was, hey, at least... I'm going to close with this because I wrote a song about my phrase. <laughs> and as a reminder, the four tips are don't listen to country music, even though I'm about to sing you another country song. Make a personal connection. Pick up a right brain activity. I was just testing you. I knew that was out of order. You passed because so early you started to correct me. And then finally, express your gratitude in your own way. And you're probably wondering to yourself, Jeffrey, you've only been playing guitar for six weeks. How can you write a song? Well, I got a lot of nerve. <laughs> and 
For those of you with particularly sharp ears, you're probably going to notice this song sounds a lot like the first song. <laughs> <laughs> but I only know two songs. One of them is George Jones, I Barely Get By, and the other one ain't. <laughs> You've likely had stresses just like me. You've likely had troubles as wide as the sea. No matter how troubled and stressed you may be, at least we're not digging coal in the hills of Tennessee. <laughs>